All right, big test ahead of us Wednesday with Florida. Um, best defensive team in the league. Pose a lot of problems with their 1-2-2. Two, two. They try to control the tempo. Uh, Nebhard, the point guard's playing great. 9-9 nine of nine against Alabama the other day. Uh, Noah Locke's been shooting it really well. Another one of their freshmen, and they've got uh, Allen, who, uh, who's been a great player for them for a long time. And uh, Johnson, the uh, four man's playing extremely well right now, a freshman. Played at IMG, played with uh, Andre Hyatt in AAU. We saw him a lot. And they've got, um, you know, a bunch of big kids who are good with um, 13 and, and 21. And uh, Stokes has been giving them good minutes as well. So be a big test for us. We're going to have to run good offense. We can't turn the ball over. They're number one in the league in turnover percentage, uh, the amount of possessions they turn the opponent over. So we're going to need to value the ball, get the ball on the backboard, and give ourselves, uh, give ourselves a shot. So... They've, they're playing extremely well, coming off back-to-back -back wins over Vanderbilt and Alabama, and they uh, they clocked Alabama on the road uh, by 18. So, be a big uh, big test for us. Well, we've seen it. We hadn't seen it since uh, UNC Greensboro. So it takes a little time to prepare for, and you got to change up what you do. It's you know they try to slow the game down and keep the game at their pace, and so we've got to do a good job attacking it. Some something, something that's a little bit unique, a little bit different. He's done it. He did it when he was at Louisiana Tech, some too. Four. Oh yeah, four total at home. Yeah. But we just talk about doing everything we need to do today. We just worry. We don't even talk about it game wise. We just talk about today. You know, winning today, making sure we do what we need to do today, making sure we have championship traits, championship habits. Uh, every day and uh, focus in on that. If you can win every minute, every hour, and then every day, then you'll give yourself a chance to win when it comes to game day. So we've tried to really break it down and, and focus on, the, on, on all the small stuff. Well, I don't go a whole lot of places besides here, and uh, I'll have my nightly outing tonight at TJ Ribs. Uh, some of my fine friends here. Uh, um, so, I mean, I'm not I'm not out and about uh, a whole bunch, but I definitely you can definitely tell the, the interest has, has has picked up and, and people are excited. So, that's good. Give them something to do between football and baseball a little bit. Um, but uh, it's been um, you know it's been good and and. Uh, I've said it from the start, you know, LSU is no different than anywhere. If you win, they like you. And so, you know, you know, the reason our football program and baseball programs have been so good is because we've been winning for a long time. And uh, that's that's the goal of our basketball program is to put us in a place where we can sustainably win. And so we're working towards that um, every day. I think we got confidence and we work on it. I mean, you guys have heard me preach for since the day I got here about six minute games and winning six minute games and being great in six minute games and something we work on, something we talk about and something I think our guys have confidence in because they know our plan and, and just have to execute our plan. Oh, he's been more up than down. He's been very, very good for us. I mean, he's a freshman. Um, he, he's been, he's been, um, Excellent for us. Sometimes his stat lines don't show what he can do. Sometimes, you know, when he doesn't shoot it as well, he does a great job defensively. You know, just his attitude and his toughness uh, really, really helps us. He's been he's been tremendous for us all season. Well, a lot of our transition defense is because of our poor offense. We take we settle for some shots and don't don't uh, don't work the ball like we need to. And so if we can clean up our offense, that'll help our transition defense a lot. Well, we can't give them easy points, obviously. I mean, they're a team that, you know, you got to, you know, they try to grind it out in the half court. We certainly don't want to give them six to eight to ten free points in transition. But they're very good at converting live ball turnovers. Like I said, they turn you over on 24% of your possessions. So one out of every four possessions just about they're turning you over. And so they convert those at a higher rate than the national average. And so we've got to do a, do a great job of valuing the ball. We only had eight turnovers. It would be nice if we could only have eight turnovers uh, Wednesday. That would be uh, advantageous for the Tigers. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we, we've got to make sure that, you know, we don't live ball turnover and, and let them get out in transition.
a lot. A lot. I couldn't put a amount of time on it, but a lot. We have analytics on a lot of stuff. We have a healthy balance on our staff. You know, I'm an analytics guy. Coach Armstrong likes the analytics. Coach Benford and Coach Hire, they like their eyes. Um, and a lot of times, you know, our analytics back up what those guys' eyes see. And uh, sometimes it confirms a lot of things. We do a lot of our scouting based on the analytics. And we do a lot of our game planning based on the analytics. And, um, you know, it's just a matter of executing and hoping there's no statistical anomalies that happen uh, over the course of the game or you've got to adjust to those. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's certain, I mean, there's, yeah, there's certain times where we have, you know, where the, the numbers even out and we have guys taking shots that we want taking shots and we kind of coax guys into taking the shots that we want them to take. I mean, that happens seven, eight, ten times a game. I mean, the other the other kids don't even know they're doing what we're, what we want them to do and forcing them to their least, uh, their least efficient spot on the floor and they take them. And sometimes you'll see me, you can pretty much, if you see me clap after a made shot, you can pretty much guarantee that that was basically the shot that we want them to take, and they just broke the percentages on that one. But a lot of times, um, a lot of times, uh, you know, we we're forcing them to shoot the shots we want them to shoot. That happens six, eight, ten times a game. Yeah, you got to walk a fine line. We got to continue to get better. You know, we got to continue to get better. Our half court defense has gotten away from us here a little bit these last three or four games, and it's not going to work. You know, playing against Florida, where it's going to be tough sledding in the half court. Offensively, we're not just going to be able to outscore Florida, so it's going to be tough sledding. And so we're get, you know, we've got to, we got to certainly work and be conscious. But we do a lot more stuff in the film room. We do a lot of stuff with individual skill work this time of the year, and uh, just try to have our guys with uh, clear minds and fresh legs come game day. I mean, it takes time to develop. It kind of happens naturally. But we knew when we – I mean, they were a close group when we recruited them. You know, those freshmen all knew each other. Those freshmen all talked to each other. They were they were pretty pretty tight-knit group when we, we recruited them. Obviously, Skyler and Trey and Cavell knew each other because they had been here. Then you add Marlon. You know, so it just kind of happened naturally. But all those guys knew each other and f were familiar with each other. So that helped and maybe expedited the process a little bit. Oh, yeah. 100%. We needed that. I talked about it last year. Emmett brings it to our big guys, and Javante brings it with our guards. We needed that bad. He's a pit bull. He's an absolute pit bull, and uh, I love it. I love the technical he got the other night. I mean, I'm not huge. That's the first technical I think we've gotten all year. I think it was. I hadn't gotten one. Oh, at Arkansas. Oh. But I thought both of those were good technicals. That the Arkansas technical send them. At, I, I thought both of them were good technicals. I love that about. I love that about Javante. He just he's um, he's into it. He and, and he he loves LSU. He loves Louisiana. Loves playing here, and um, very very uh, very very pleased with him. I don't I don't know. I don't know about all that. It sent a message, got our team fired up. It sent a message that, I mean, I don't want to get into it all, but Georgia was, I mean, it was an intense game, and they were saying some things. And, I mean, it sent a message that we're going, we're just not going to stand here and take it. And I thought that was very, very well-timed and, and good time to send that message. And we went on our run from there. No, I don't sense any of that. I don't know. I'm not paying attention to all that. A few. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't get many. No, I had two or three last year. I had one in the Alabama game, one in the Sam Houston State game, and maybe one more. I don't know. A couple times.
Just like the Javante press conference. I like it. It's good. He deserves it. Oh. No, there's no there's not there's not a phony bone in his body now, guys. He's as real as they come. He's as real as they come. He's Baton Rouge through and through. He's as real as they come. His mother's done an unbelievable job raising him. And she raised him tough. And uh, he plays tough. And um, they're, they're, he's, a, he's as real as they come. I love the kid to death. And um, he's, been, he's, been, he's been great for us. And the best thing about him is when you need him the most and in the biggest moments, he delivers. He don't ever shy away when, it, when it's tough. When it's tough sledding, he, do, he doesn't ever shy away. And the moment's never too big for him. That's, that's um, it's really, really hard to do um, as a freshman. Just think back, I mean, the shot he hit against Louisiana Tech. Um, you know, so, he, I mean, he's, he's, been, he's, been, he's been great for us. Oh, I don't know. I think, I think uh, I don't know. It's a tight balance because I think people take the league more seriously if it's Kentucky and everybody else. If that makes sense, you know. I think everybody likes it. You know, you want your blue blood to be the blue blood. Um, uh, but I do think with it being as tight as it is, and kind of, you know, a couple of us up there, I think I think it it maybe uh, maybe helps a, a, a little bit. Probably does more for Tennessee and us to be recognized with Kentucky than it does for Kentucky to be, and that's pretty obvious. But um, you know, I mean, it's what we're striving to be is, 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 is what they've been for a long, long time. And so we've got a lot of work to do. And that's like I said earlier today, we're not going to get the benefit of the doubt on anything. And we haven't earned the benefit of the doubt on anything. And so we've just got to keep plugging along and keep working as hard as we can work and try to try to break that stuff down. That's a process. It takes takes time. I don't think. I don't think people are shaking in their boots when they see the purple and gold right now, but hopefully we can get there at some point. Well, um, my first break was a guy, Oliver Purnell. Really, he I was uh, – uh, I was uh, I was a graduate assistant at Clemson, and the director of operations left. I was 23 years old. I had no business getting the job, but I, I ran our camps, and our camps at Clemson were very, very beneficial for Coach Purnell financially. So I don't think he wanted to risk losing some of that camp money. So he just hired me. I mean, there's he could have hired 200 200,000 people that were more qualified than me for the job. And uh, he was able to hire me. And then Coach Amaker gave me my first assistance job, and that was through a guy that I worked with at Clemson who's now the head coach at Howard University, Kevin Nickelberry. They, they had grown up with each other and knew each other. And then um, I had an unbelievable AD at Tennessee Chattanooga that took a huge, huge gamble on me. Um, I, was, I was one of the youngest coaches in the country at the time when he hired me. I, was, I think I was two or second or third youngest coach. And uh, they had a, he had a women's basketball opening and a men's basketball opening, and he hired Jim Foster, who was a Hall of Fame women's coach. He had just been let go at Ohio State. He'd been at Vanderbilt for a long time, been to the women's Final Four in 93, 94, um, was it, just a phenomenal coach. So he kind of taken over the women's program, and I think uh, the AD, David Blackburn, he's at Middle Tennessee now. Um, I think he felt like, hey, maybe I can roll the dice on the men's program. I bought a little equity with this women's hire with Jim Foster hiring a Hall of Famer. And, Let's uh, let's roll the dice on this young guy and see if he can see if he can get it done. And so I'm very very thankful for all those folks for for Coach Purnell and um, certainly for um, Coach Amaker for hiring me and David Blackburn for giving me a chance. And then obviously if we don't go to the Final Four at VCU, David Blackburn doesn't even know who I am. So for Shaka, so I've been very very fortunate. I've worked for very very good people. Been around very very good people. Well, yeah, was, yeah, I, you know we. we we ran a good team camp, and Coach Purnell probably has an addition on his house from our camp money, so he he did well. His wife liked it more than he did. Vic, Vicky probably helped me get the job more than anybody. His wife, not what theirs was. That got off the rails. All right, see y'all at.